Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Mike Retker. This is my brother, Mark. Hello. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, I'll do read the scriptures for today. And uh, uh, my brother is going to talk about uh, missions. Um, you know, it's not a subject that a lot of people talk about in the churches today. And uh, I think we got to give them some love today. And uh, so that's what we'll be talking about is all about missions. So I'll give it, hand it over to my brother, Mark, to uh, do the talk. Hello, everyone, and uh, God bless. Uh, I pray in Jesus' name that this will be a blessing to everyone. Um, my exposure to uh, mission work started in Los Angeles when I was part of a, a mission, and uh, I heard about it in Vancouver uh, from a sister named uh, Amy Wong. And uh, I'm not sure if their mission is open today, but uh, that's where I started out. And... It was a, w a wonderful experience in my walk. It changed my life. It changed my walk. It helped me uh, be disciple better. Um, if any, if anyone has ever ha took part or got involved in the mission, I recommend that you, know, you do so because you'll get a real big blessing out of it. I just want people to know that uh, that a mission is not uh, about taking a vow of poverty or or suffering. Um, it's about helping people out. It's about uh, ministering the, um, God's word. Um, I just like people to think or consider a mission is basically a small church or a house church, um, and uh, we do we work with people directly and we minister to them on a more personal basis. It's a more hands-on uh, church work. You can you can spend as, uh, a few minutes or a couple hours, a couple days, or you could uh, dedicate your whole entire life to it. I spent uh, three weeks in a mission in Los Angeles, and I learned how to, uh, to cook and prepare uh, meals for large groups of people. It discipled me because I had to really have faith and trust the Lord. And um, it really got me active and busy doing God's work. Because we had to um, go out in the street and uh, tell people about Jesus and preach the gospel and uh, bring him in so that uh, they can eat and uh, have some of the things that they need. Um, missions aren't just to provide people's basic needs like food and water and shelter. Missions also must provide spiritual food for people to grow and be blessed by. Um, and the mission I was part of, praise God, that's what they did. They shared the word and they supplied people's needs. And I would also like to, to recommend that um, if you are to open a mission, that uh, you try and keep it from being government owned and operated. It's good to um, operate it. Um, by yourself and uh, to have a bunch of believers and other mature believers to uh, help you uh, start a mission and run a mission. Um, I recommend it for uh, any young person uh, starting out, uh, anyone who just started, you know, in their walk, it's a great way to uh, be trained and discipled in whatever calling you may have. Gives you an opportunity to uh, get involved and to uh, make a difference uh, wherever you are. And uh, a mission can be any place. Um, it can be in any house or in any place. And, uh, you know, missions do also provide um, clothing and shelter and lodgings for um, other believers that may be doing the work of God or passing through. Um, I just like to, uh, I just pray uh, that you would be inspired to get more involved in missions and mission work. It's a very um, challenging, but it is a very rewarding um, thing to do in, in, in your walk. And uh, it's changed my life and it's made me appreciate um, God's blessing, uh, especially the blessing that a lot of people enjoy in countries like Canada and America and many other places. Um, it gives us appreciation for what God is doing for us and has done for us. And uh, 
I just like to uh, hand it over to my brother and read a few scriptures. All right, uh, we'll take up in Luke 10 and uh, in verse uh, 2. I'm going to read uh, Luke 10, uh, verses uh, 2 to 9. Um, it says here, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs amongst wolves. Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the sons of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. And into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. In verse 9, And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. And then verse 10, I'll just add verse 10, it's good. But into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same and say, even the very dust of your city, which cleaves on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Praise God. We'll leave it there for now, and then I'll hand it over back to my brother to uh, explain a little bit about what I just read. You know, when it, when, when, in regards to uh, mission work, it talks about in Luke how we, um, you know, don't carry uh, scribes or purses or, you know, extra things. Um, it is certainly true when you do mission work. Um, it's good to pack light um, and uh, prepare yourself for the work. Um, as Jesus uh, used uh, the, this situation to disciple his disciples, um, uh, mission work does it in the very same way. So we go out and we look for people of peace in any place or city or a house. And um, we can find these people of peace that they listen to the word uh, and they accept uh, us and they let us live and uh, um, lodge there and uh, they uh, provide us food. Um, then it's a place where you can begin to start a mission, where you can begin to start doing some mission work. And uh, it also talks about healing the sick and praying for people. It's uh, a huge part of doing missions. Uh, we need to um, pray for the sick, um, care for people's needs. We need to cast out demons and uh, do all the work of ministry. And we need to share the gospel with these people, the people of peace that we find and encounter. Uh, these are the houses and the places that we begin to set up a mission the places where we find people of peace. Um, this is where I, be, you know, I, I began. There was, you know, there was people of peace and uh, I've encountered them and uh, as, as it goes. Uh, but I'd also like to stress, um, you don't have to um, come to uh, a mission work or the mission field with nothing, with no provision. It talked about um, every laborer and every man is worthy of his hire. So, uh, I've also done, I've, I've done you know, teaching, uh, English teaching in places that I've um, looked to do mission work. So it is a, it's a wise and a good thing to uh, be employed and have some, some work uh, where you're there. Um, but it is also important to uh, keep in mind that when you do mission work, that you're not there to uh, make profit and to earn profit. It's, it's uh, meant to be a nonprofit uh, situation. Um, we need to bless people and, uh, you know, people shouldn't be paying for their ministry. Um, 
A mission is what provides that ministry. So we need to um, look to God and how, how we uh, do things. And uh, so if you're able to uh, come into a mission and uh, just dedicate all your time and your strength to it, um, you'll find a good blessing there. And if you want to provide for a mission and fund a mission um, financially, that's a good blessing too. Um, it is also a good way to uh, be involved in a mission if you can actually find work in that place. Um, it's definitely very beneficial to do things that way. Um, I'd also just like to uh, mention about the real purpose of a mission is to fulfill the Great Commission, which I'll let my uh, brother Mike read here. Which, uh, which we'll, gospel? We'll, we'll go, go to, to uh, Mark 16. Okay, Mark 16, we'll go to Mark 16. And uh, we'll take it up. I think we'll start in probably verse uh, 15. And uh, this is Jesus speaking. And uh, this is basically the last couple verses in uh, the book of Mark. And if you look at uh, the last couple verses in basically all of the Gospels, it Jesus is, is basically the last things that he says pretty much before he leaves this earth. So it's very important that we understand that's the context. That's what, how important it is. It's paramount that we understand that. And uh, so I'm going to talk about, we call, I mean, a lot of people call this the Great Commission, and that's exactly what it is. Jesus has commissioned us as uh, Bible-believing, uh, spirit-filled, um, anointed believers to do. We need to preach the gospel. And uh, so, and we need to do certain things. The gospel is not just giving people the good news of what Jesus did on the cross. And it's also uh, more active than that. Um, there's also baptizing and then making sure people have the Holy Spirit since they believed. Something that Paul, um, Apostle Paul asked uh, a bunch of people that were once uh, disciples of John. Well, they were disciples of John at that time, and uh, they had not heard anything about the Holy Spirit. And so Paul made that um, known to them, and then... Um, after they received the Holy Spirit, they also were baptized. And you'll see that all over the book of Acts. It's uh, all it's multiple times. So it's well established. And that's what uh, the apostolic doctrine and what they did. Um, that's very part of the gospel. It's a very important part of the aspect of the gospel. So we start with uh, preaching the gospel, telling what Jesus did. But they also need to repent. They need to be repentant and realize that they can't continue to live a sinful life. Because God is a holy God, and uh, um, you know, uh, our souls are, were purchased with His own blood. So I think it's the least thing that we can do is to do what He's called us to do. Um, obedience is greater than sacrifice, so it's better to do that. So uh, I'll go into the verse fifteen. We'll start there. We'll take it up there. And He said unto them, "Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature." He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Amen. This is should be the reality of every believer. This is what should happen. And we should be well acquainted with this. And if we are not, then we're not actually uh, fully preaching the gospel in the way that Jesus has met, met us to do. Um, you know, uh, so we need to follow apostolic doctrine. We need to follow and obey Jesus. That's That's what's important here. It was him speaking to them. And so we need to take this seriously. Uh, baptism is, is not just a right. It's, it's, it's a necessity. Uh, if, if, we don't, if we're not baptized, our sins are not remitted. Remission means our sins are completely taken away. Um, they're no longer there anymore. And that's because of the blood of Jesus. But we need to be baptized. For those sins of our old life to be washed away. 
and to be given, we have to bury the old man. The old man must die. The, the fleshy carnal nature must die. That's why baptism is, is not something that's just a right or just something that we do. It's something that we must do. It's, it's, a, it's a requirement that Jesus has for us to do, to, to enter into salvation. And then we need to be spiritually born again. Not just of water, which is baptism, but of the Spirit as well, which is receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. And there is signs. Um, talks about speaking in new tongues. That's one of them. Um, laying hands on the sick and seeing them actually recover is another sign. Uh, you can read in the Bible multiple places in the book of Acts. They receive the Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues and they prophesied. So that's another thing, prophesying. And, and miracles and healings being done. So these are very clear signs that you've received the Holy Spirit. Very clear signs that you're a believer and that you're preaching the full gospel. We, can, we cannot leave these things out. It's very important that we do those things. And uh, we do have divine protection. Talking about, you know, um, you know, taking up serpents and drinking poison accidentally that it wouldn't hurt us. And things like that. We have divine protection. We we are going as lambs amongst the wolves, but we have the Lion of Judah going with us. We are not alone. Each and every time we go out there as lambs amongst these wolves, of amongst the wolves, we're not alone. We we have Jesus with us, and uh, so that's really important to understand. So we can have the faith and assurance that He's with us. And two, when we have the power of the Holy Spirit in us, and we have that anointing. We can rely on that to give us the words to speak, to give us the boldness, that faith to move to the next level. Hallelujah. I really praise God for that. I really praise God for his word. His word is what's going to set us free. It's the truth of this word, the truth of this word that will set us free. Uh, you know, we, can, we need to follow God. We need to follow his word. It's not men we follow. It is Jesus. It is the word of God that will give us and it's a lamp unto our feet. It will light the way. That's how we know what to do. It's how why, how we know that we're in the right path is by his holy word. And uh, that's part of another major part of our uh, YouTube channel here is that we want to talk about, you know, truth. And uh, we want to make it clear that we're all about speaking the word of God in truth and uh, providing strong ministry, something that you can fall back on and be fed, that you don't come, you leave without being fed, without being uh, thinking about some important things. And so I'll leave it there, hand it over back to my brother Mark uh, to uh, speak more about uh, missions and what I just spoke about. So I'll hand it back to my brother Mark. The blessing of a mission is uh, doing those very things that um, the Lord called us to do. Um, all the signs and miracles in the works of a believer um and i found that the missions uh, are one of the greatest and best places to do that one of the best places to actually obey the gospel uh, it's one of the best places to um be discipled and uh, trained in doing the work of god um faith comes from hearing the word of god we learn by doing things you know, it uh, comes from study that uh, we, we actually retain close to 90% of what we learn and do ourselves. Um, they come to, to know that um, it's one of the best ways to actually learn anything is uh, by doing it yourself, by learning it and a little, little, little bit by bit and step by step. Um, it, se it seems to be the best way to retain things. And... Uh, I, I can't stress enough that um, missions actually are great training grounds for uh, new believers to learn and grow in their walks and in their callings. Um, uh, pastors in ministry, uh, I encourage them to uh, either be part of missions or allow their um, young believers and new believers to be part of uh, missions because it really teaches us um, to live by faith, um, to operate faith, teaches us how to do that. We have experience doing that. That's how we gain that viable 
um, life experience, um, sharing the gospel with people we don't know and uh, feeding them and caring for their needs, uh, both spiritually and naturally. It gives us that um, ability. We, we, we learn and we grow spiritually and we gain that confidence. Uh, and uh, I can't, can't explain it in any words, um, the blessing and the joy and the fulfillment you get uh, being part of the missions, being part of souls and lives being changed forever. Um, I can't put it into words to describe um, the feeling it gives a person. Um, all I can say is it's all to the Lord's glory and not of my glory, but, you know, I praise the Lord for the opportunity to uh, be involved in missions. And uh, I would like to... Um, start missions all over the world. Um, but I do need help. I need financial help. And I also need laborers, people who are willing and able to uh, spend any amounts of time and any amounts of money that they feel in their heart to do so, um, to come and be part of the mission. I invite anybody and everybody. Um, it's truly uh, a situation, an opportunity to... Uh, Learn and grow spiritually. Um, if you haven't uh, helped out or taken part in a mission, I would really pray that you would enjoy and take part in that experience. I, I pray uh, that this video would inspire people to, to do that work of the ministry, to be inspired to open ministries um, all over the world. I, I pray that it would light a fire in people, this fire of desire to... Um, to actually make a difference in their life, to make a difference in another community, in another country. Um, I just pray, Lord, um, that uh, the Lord would uh, bring more laborers into the harvest. Um, the, true, the true essence of a mission is to uh, be a beacon of light in the darkness, to be a true lighthouse in the darkness, where people run to in, in a time of danger, in a time of darkness. We are living in dark times, and... Everyone in the world, um, everyone, we, we all need missions to go to and run to. Um, they can be a, a house church. Um, it can be just a building, a humble building, or or just in the middle of an open field. It, it doesn't matter where it is or how, how it is. Um, it is a blessing, and uh, we all need that uh, blessing in our lives. And, and uh, we all need... Um, the opportunity to um, learn and grow in our walks and our callings. Um, I just like to uh, pray uh, in Jesus' name that that people would have a heart to do the work of the missions. In Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, that uh, anyone and everybody who might be considering uh, being taking part in missions or being part of the work, I just pray in Jesus' name that uh, you would give people the strength to do the work um, that you've called them to do, Lord. I just pray that uh, ministries would be would begin and that ministries would be inspired to begin. Uh, we just pray, Lord, and we pray for all the missions all over the world, Lord, that uh, you would bless them with laborers and that you would bless them with the supplies that they need to do their work. Lord, I just thank you for today and uh, like to praise God for any any anything that can happen. And uh, we just, just leave it to... Um, to the Lord's glory, and uh, just uh, like to uh, end it there for today. All right, goodbye, and, and uh, good don't forget to subscribe to our uh, channel here. It's called World for Truth, and uh, uh, don't forget you can share our link. And uh, we want to do more videos and continue to do that. And uh, we will need some, some. You know, it would be nice to get uh, people to subscribe. So don't forget to subscribe, everyone. And God bless you all. And uh, we'll see you again. We'll probably be doing a, a video on the gospel. Um, uh, that probably be the one of the other videos we'll be doing soon. And then we'll be doing other videos. Um, if you have any uh, questions that you want answered, yeah, just please uh, give us a comment and uh, let us know. Um, if there's any other uh, pray, if you have prayer needs, let us know. We'll pray for you. Um, also, um, if, if you want to help out, let us know that too. That'd be good. And um, yeah, there's, uh, and then we, if there's any other, um, um, not just questions, but 
If you would like us to talk about a certain topic, you can just let us know what topic you'd like us to talk about and we'd be more than glad to discuss it. And we're willing to discuss anything, and I mean anything. So anything's on the table, we're willing to talk about. Uh, and we're gonna uh, look at that subject and wh where it uh, is in the Bible and uh, we'll do our best to uh, uh, give you a, a clear and uh, concise and good, solid Bible teaching in that topic. So God bless you, everybody. And uh, that's it for now. Take care. God bless. God bless.